Hi everyone! Today I wanted to show you how I achieved to create a server browser for my multiplayer game. So a setup where on the client sites I have this, this window where I can search for any running game instances and there's also a small um, server interface which shows a little and uh, there's like some fake map selection and if I change the map here this will then uh, show accordingly also in the, uh, yeah, in the server browser here on the client side. Um, Currently, what you see here is two instances of the of the player, so the client, and one instance of the server on the same machine. But of course, this also works with um, game instances that are running somewhere on the world. And for that, I also have installed, um, or I show you the the overview first. Maybe that makes it easier. Whoops. Um, to make this possible, I have. Um, a Python script which acts as a server browser or a silver server IP collector which runs on a remote server. And all game instances that are running as a server, they connect to this remote server browser script. This collects the IPs and any client that is started can access this very same instance and retrieve a list of servers. And with this IP addresses then can again talk to all the servers to ask, hey, are you really running? And please send me information about what is the map and number of players or whatever information you want to send from the server to the clients. Um, I'm using HTTP requests to make the communication up here to the server browser scripts and UDP connection then to um, connect, talk directly with, from within Godot from the clients to the servers, which makes it a bit more specific. And we'll have a look on how this uh, goes on behind the curtain in just a second. But so that we believe, let me just... Um, Oh, yeah, by the way, you can, of course, find then all the code in a GitHub repository that I can show you, so you can just give it a try yourself. Um, but let's just uh, demonstrate that this is also working for um, any other server. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I am now here in my, uh, this is an Ubuntu instance running on a remote server. And I feel the same project and can just start it from here. So now my server is running and now it shows up here as well. This is great and yeah, for just for dem demonstration, there was a hiccup, interesting. I can now uh, join with this player and there I see, okay, now here's one player playing on the local, uh, same as here. Um, and if I, for instance, exit out the server here, then it disconnects and I see again only the, the server instance running on the uh, remote server. Yeah, this is um, this is that. Um, let's just close this here again. And let's have a look behind the curtains a bit. So this is the server project. This is relatively easy. Here we just kind of have this uh, main scene with a console window and the where you can select the map. And the most of the magic happens here. And this connection handler, this is a quite simple script. Um, that just takes the information about the, the port for the communication to the server browser, port and IP address, and the port for the UDP connection then to talk to the individual clients. And there's a timer, and just on this timer, it just um, connects through this HTTP request node um, with the server and just calls a set server function so that the uh, server script um, just kind of like collects this information. Um, it's a bit more complex on the uh, client side. Here we have also this interface that you just saw in the demo. And I have, besides all these uh, user interface things, this uh, server browser scene here, which has two components. One is the server address retriever. Let's just look in here. Um, this very similarly to the server project has an HTTP request node. And again, takes the same information about a port and IP. So adjust whatever you need here. And then it talks to the, um, to the uh, uh, server script to get the server list. But also um, because this will also then include um, the servers, uh, the, the IPs of any locally in, uh, running instances. Um, and we can also ask for the own IP so that I know, okay, with, the, with which IP do I actually uh, appear in this um, remote list? And then whenever I get a result, I can go through the, uh, did it, did it, where is it here? 
yeah, you just like walk yourself through the script. I'm not going to go by this line by line. But in the end, here we get the uh, the list from the of IP addresses from the server. This is this line here from this uh, yeah, JSON here. And then I iterate through these lists. And if the IP, which I see is not my own IP, I will append this. And the own IP is already always kind of um, added here at the beginning. So even if the remote server browser is not accessible, I will always scan for servers on the very same machine on the local host. So this is always there. And the rest of this function basically just adds the um, other IPs if there are any from the um, remote server. So far, so good. Then kind of this list of um, this updated server list then will connect it to the server info retriever, which is the second scene here. And this guy is a little more, bit more complex than I hoped uh, in the beginning to make this possible, but I think it's still kind of like working pretty well. And the uh, uh, secret ingredient here is that we'll use these uh, packet peer UDP, which corresponds to, where is it? This UDP server that we start here on, this, uh, on, the, on the server side. So this, can, this server can listen on a specific port. And we use this packet peer then to also go through all the, uh, the servers that we got, or the, all the IP addresses that we got from the server. And yeah, um, send packages over. And I mean, again, I'm not gonna walk you through all these details, just uh, walk through that if you want, or just feel free to reach out if you have any questions. But in the end, what it's doing is contacts every um, server from this info. And this guy then um, replies, it sends a package back if it gets a connection from any other client um, where it's in a string kind of encodes the current the, the map name and the number of players. So this information then gets back to the client. And yeah, also to, uh, of course it can then connect, uh, calculate the ping, like how long did it take to send and to get the information back. And this information is then in the end somewhere up here uh, put in a dictionary, and this dictionary is then with the information uh, sent to this uh, user interface. So the server browser user interface is this one here, um, which then takes this, um, this uh, did, where is it, update server dictionary here. It's So it's uh, a dictionary with the key is the IP address, and the value is then what just encoded in the string, the map name and the number of players, plus the ping that we could just calculate by taking the time from sending it to retrieving and then update the user interface accordingly. So um, again, uh, I'm not going to walk through that in detail, just feel free to look through it. I, I hope it's uh, more or less uh, clearly structured. Yeah, and then this is um, working. And uh, just maybe one last thing. Um, if we here now um, join a server, um, we of course, from all the instances that actually decide, okay, now I really want to play on a server and uh, play on a game instance, uh, the server browser stopped so that we stop kind of like reaching out to all these servers and talking to them and oh, are you online please give me the map name and so on uh, this is then stopped on the server browser and if we disconnect from the server we just uh, start the server browser again so that again all these all these connections here these uh, orange ones they, they only happen when we kind of like as the client are in the lobby and not actually connected through the enet um, protocol Okay, so I think this is kind of like it. Um, it seems to work. Um, I'm not sure there might be uh, on one point or another more elegant ways to do that. And um, for instance, if you really, I mean, or what you could also do, you could um, through this here already kind of like post the information of which map and how many players are there. So this could already kind of also be uh, stored on the server browser script here. And if you only want to like get the, the ping between the client and the respective servers, because this is something that has to be happening on this level. Um, you could also kind of like take um, other alternatives. Um, for instance, I just uh, put this here. There is also ways of taking os.execute and then you can do something like ping and then need to put in the arguments uh, to what address or something like this. Um, so this could also like work to just, if you really want only get the ping, then you don't need all this UDP connection. Um, I decided not to do this out of two reasons. Um, one, uh, this OS and execute with the ping function, it's kind of um, system specific. So the argument you need to put in and also what comes back um, is difficult for Windows, Mac, Linux, probably also like mobile exports. So this made it a bit difficult for me to test this because I don't have all platforms available. And the other is, um, of course, um, 
it's not very specific. I mean, I can always ping my local host and we'll get a response. Um, but it doesn't mean that there's actually a game instance. And it's, I'm using this port, uh, UDP communication with a specific port kind of like ensures that there is some sort of specificity. And only if there is somewhere, like this UDP client here, uh, but, but where are we? The client. No, the server here. The, the, uh, this, if there is this UDP server really listening on this, on this port, only then I really see it also in my, in my server list. So I think this is also a nice feature. Cool, okay, I think this is it. Um, I don't want to stretch this too far. Um, happy to help out if you have any questions and so long. Um, have a nice Christmas time. It's coming soon. And yeah, see you around.